morning, church. Happy Halloween. I invite you to find the light of God uh, and his glows in the brightness in, in times of chaos, confusion, and darkness. So let us begin our stewardship campaign today. Our money story is our series. Remember, on November 20th, will be a harvest blessing luncheon as you bring your pledge cards. I also have some other announcements to make, to share, to be connected with each other. We will be honoring our loved ones who passed away last year, last year on Sunday, November 6th worship service. Please send the information of your loved ones who have entered the triumphant church uh, by November 1st to the church office. If you more uh, like to have more information, please contact us. Next week also is our daylight saving starts. Please set your clock back. On November 5th, uh, 9 uh, a.m. to 1 p.m., we will be hosting the Pumpkin Smash uh, event. Bring your pumpkins to the church and smash them in the composing uh, dumpster. This event is co-sponsored by the uh, Environmental Commission City of West Chicago and green, our Green Disciples of First United Methodist Church of West Chicago as we sanction through scares. I hope that you will bring your uh, pumpkin uh, to smash and to uh, participate in bringing more green earth uh, among us. So as we come uh, near to the midterm election next week, our church is a polling uh, station too. We hope that you will utilize this time uh, and participate and take action as you would and exercise your right to vote. Also, a charge conference will be on November 20th at 7 p.m. It's a very historical charge conference as we are going to warning on the future of our church as, we, as Winfield Community UMC merge with us. I hope that you will be with us. Also, uh, there will be a town hall meeting after the worship service on November 13 to more to talk about more about this merger. Please come. Our community Thanksgiving service and a potluck will be on Tuesday, November 22nd. We will host the uh, combined uh, bilingual service with St. Andrew's Lutheran Church down the road and Winfield Community UMC. Breakfast with Santa, it's an ever annual uh, togetherness. And so in December 3rd, we are going to host Breakfast with Santa. We do need volunteers. If you would like to be a part of any of the stuff that you want to do, please contact the church. Now let us begin our service as we enter ourselves and remember what the God story was and how our story mingled together. Let us begin.
Hello, children of God. Good morning. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever been on a trip? Maybe uh, to the grocery store, maybe somewhere out on the town, or uh, who went with you? Uh, did you go alone? Uh, when you leave your house, uh, what does that feel like when you go out? What does it, what preparation you do to go out? What do you suppose it would feel like to be on a trip when you didn't know where you were going or when you would get there? How ha Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like about taking a trip and had no question, like, didn't know where it ends. Do you know that? Well, I would like to tell you about the scripture today. The journey that the Israelites took uh, didn't know that it ended up into the desert. The Israelites in the story began wondering how they would eat. They packed their bags and were ready for the trip. But after a while, they ran out of their packed food. And worse yet, they were in the desert, which meant they didn't have a lot of plants or animals around them. But God still gave them food to eat. In the Bible, there are stories that have been handed down from year to year, from generation to generation. We tell stories about God to remind ourselves of our history and how much God loves us. Can you recall a moment when you felt loved? Maybe it's right now, sitting here in this place, or maybe somewhere where you'll see your family member or friend around you. Do you know that you are loved by God? You are. We can remember when God showed up and did something important. God provided each person with enough gifts and enough things. God provided enough bread to eat and enough to share with everyone in their community. That's what Israelites did. And that's what we are called to do, to look and share and love the community. Join me in the prayer. Dear God, thank you always for giving the stories that remind us to remember your faithfulness. Remember that you always are with us. So speak to, to uh, talk to us as we uh, find your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to meet you next time. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy the rest of the worship service. Bye now.
this brings us a press of a people with a more of a liturgy together. We're going to uh, actually have a liturgy of prayer each week uh, to speak, to, uh, to talk and to responsibly uh, lift our prayers. So join me, uh, I invite you to join me in our responsive prayer liturgy. The story of God calls us to remember that creation was made good and Sabbath is necessary. The story of God calls us to remember that we belong to one another for we are bone of bone and flesh of flesh. The story of God calls us to remember that reconciliation between siblings is holy and slavery of any kind is evil. The story of God calls us to remember that the wilderness is real and God will be with us raining down manna and speaking in a still small voice. The story of God calls us to remember that love looks like healing the sick, eating with outcast, making room for children, and seeing the unseen. The story of God calls us to remember because if we forget, we risk making God, love and reconciliation small. So as we remember, may we declare, we believe in a God who made all things good, who stands with the suffering walks with us in wilderness, seeing the outlook, loves with an untamed heart and makes room for all at God's table. Amen. Now please join me in our Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And ever. Amen.
So it is a season of fall. The temperatures are cooler. The leaves are turning orange and brown. The smell of this pumpkin baked cookies are rafting from the oven and filling the entire house. Now, there's another thing. Football season is in the full swing, more or less. Halloween, like tomorrow, and soon we'll be turning our clocks back for daylight. Savings time. And for many churches, like us, it's a stewardship season, a time when we make our annual promise, our covenant to be good stewards of resources. We have been given to use for the work of God's kingdom, uh, ministry that affirms and recognizes what God is doing through God's people to help the church and the community grow in faith through worship and through loving others and to follow and serve Jesus. We have done with worship and education and pastoral care and fellowship, ministry that offers love, liberation, um, nourishment, uh, visions, healing, and support to those who are hurting and in need. Ministry grounded and nurtured in the practice of gratitude for God's gifts and selfless, loving acts of giving to others in need. That ministry, we do shapes our relationship with God and the world. It shapes our story as God's people, as followers of Christ. <laughs> Woven in the large story in our money story, a theme we will explore together over the next four Sundays of stewardship. We begin our series by looking back at, at what our spoken and unspoken money stories have been and how those stories have impacted our fam practices of stewardship, how our stories and God's stories comes together and how we remember the impact and the practices that impacts our stewardship. So this week we begin with the word remember. The Our Money Story Stewardship Study General uh, ask participants to recall their first memory of money as a child and their first memory of money in the church. Today is a day for remembering. At each moment in this time of worship, we are remembering some part of God's story or some part of our own stories. Everyone has a money story. And I would say even God does that too. Even he has a money story. First, we heard the story of God's people in the wilderness. The Israelites escaped from the slavery free at last. But now in their freedom, they find themselves at a very difficult moment not from the harsh leadership of the Pharaoh, but from the simple fact that they have been on the move for a month and now they have um, run out of food. They are afraid. They are afraid that they will not have enough. <laughs> That's why they are fearful. That's why there was confusion and chaos because they do not have enough. Today's reading from Exodus is evidence of God's money story. The Israelites 
were part of Egypt's slave economy, bricks makers for an empire who were treated less than human. God, with Moses as spokesperson, liberates the people from this oppression and sends them into the wilderness. The Israelites complain about their new situation, convincing themselves into believing that though they were brutalized by their Egyptian task masters, they could at least hang on or hang out by the food parts and get their fill of bread. But despite their whining, God gave them manna and quail, enough for each person for several days. And the Israelites didn't have to do anything extraordinary to deserve this gift. They didn't have to work for it, nor did they have to be on their best behavior, which clearly they weren't. Aaron Weber Johnson, a consultant and a co-collaborator on the, our series, Our Money Story Curriculum, keenly observes saying, the theme of the God supplying enough food here in this text is a recurring theme throughout the Bible. Here we see a people enslaved for generations, moving from an economy of fear and deprivation to one of provision in the wilderness. From the fear, the economy of fear, to one of the provision in the wilderness. Strikingly, God provides a concept for what enough looks like and guides the faith community into claiming a day of Sabbath, a practice that simultaneously provides rest and guards against hoarding. I remember 15 years ago while studying at Garrett Theological Seminary in Evanston, when a group of classmates and I volunteered at Night Shelter downtown, where we served meal, helped guests get settled in and also stayed overnight in case there was an emergency. Following dinner, I was tasked with overseeing the shower proce procedure, um, which meant I stood near the door uh, for a shower area. As you must have all rec um, been, uh, we were doing for the pets shelter too. It's the same place and same kind of thing that we stay and handed out the towels and hotel bars of soap as several men came uh, through to wash off in one of the shower stalls. After they finished bathing and got dressed, they would grab some free dollar store shaving razors and travel size uh, shaving cream and deodorants on their way out. That was each night was my job in downtown Chicago night shelter. One middle aged guy with a thick uh, thinking black hair who, who who owned nothing but the clothes he was wearing, which was t-shirt and jeans and socks and sneakers turned to me one night and said, you always leave with more than what you came in with. For someone who lived a life of scarcity, 
and the fear and deprivation on the streets of Chicago to suddenly be given a towel, soap, a shower, and some toiletries. It was enough. God always provides enough. We must simply remember our money stories of scarcity and bountiness and the moments when God surprised us with manna in the wilderness. And we must remember again and again to share the ample amounts of what God has given without anxiety, fear, criticism, judgment, and complaining, but instead, but instead with, with abundance of love and grace. Simply love and grace. We read another story this morning, the story of Judas conspiring with the religious leaders to have Jesus killed. This is a Lenten story, a Passover story, and money is a part of the story right there when the Passover is having, as it so often it is the Jesus story. The money is a central part. It is a profoundly uncomfortable story, as so often is the case that money is caught up in the power dynamics and deadly intentions. But this is also a story of unfathomable grace. Even though, even, even though Jesus makes a strong statement of Judas' culpability, as the story unfolds, Judas is still at the table with him. And Judas takes and eats the bread and drinks from the cup. Jesus does not Damn even Judas from the table of grace, even though he knew he's the one who's going to betray. You may or may not know this. Jesus talks more about money than he talks about anything else in the, uh, during his time here. More than he talks about prayer, more than he talks about the kingdom of God, more than he talks about his own uh, his crucifixion or discipleship. He talks more about money. And that's because money stories are spiritual stories, are faithful stories, a faith stories. Both shows what we place at the center of our hearts and lives. For where our treasure is, there our heart will be also in Corinthians that we read. God loves us and God wants us to have enough. And so God provides enough. God wants us to thrive and wants us to thrive in community. No one is an island today is a day for remembering so many things, our stories, the story of the faith community, the stories of those who have gone before us that we are going to remember next week. And today we remember all of the stories that connects with our church, our faith, the love that welcomes us to the table, the love that provides enough that love is what binds us together, even in the times of betrayal. And that's what on that night, when God gave himself up, at that time, Judas came and remember. God just said, Jesus just said, remember me. Even in that moment of betrayal, he opened up this grace because it's enough for us. It's enough for us to love. He opened that grace because he knew that one day 
just like Judas, we will know that money doesn't matter, but the money stories does. Because that makes us fulfillment of our lives. So go out, share your story of money stories that God has put in your hearts. Share your stories with others. Remember those stories and how the God story of redemption, of grace, of mercy, forgiveness, of love interacts your story and makes it a faithful servant of God. Go and remember. Amen. Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity. You can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Odney.
for joining us today. Thank you so much for uh, being part of us. Uh, we will continue our summer series on stewardship. Um, uh, and uh, if you would uh, come to next time, we will be honoring our saints. We give out uh, of a desire to participate in all we do. And we give as a, as, as a sign of gratitude. We give because we belong to one another, don't we? We give our lives and give our lives to God and people to build a more just uh, world around us. We give because we love and that's what love does. So the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and amazing presence of Holy Spirit reside in you wherever you go as you remember the God story of love. In the name of Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.